know when we're ready to go. If the light turns on. Oh, hey. Hello, everyone. I got my cue. The life signs on. This is Peter Stone from Peter Stone Jewelry. Peter Stone Companies. Peter Stone Group of Companies. Why do I have a group of companies? Because I love to travel. And the only reason I have a group of companies is because I do love to travel. I started right here in this little town of Manchester by the sea, right outside here on the harbor when I was a little kid. I used to walk down the street from my house, which is probably a half a mile to the harbor every morning. I heard the waves crashing up on the beach, singing beach. And it was like music to my ears. And I'm like, always wanting to go on my boat, always wanting to be near the ocean, near the water. And the water took me to countries around the world because I became an engineer and worked on merchant ships. I traveled to over 45 countries on merchant ships, but they made some changes, changes that I didn't like. I was making a lot of money, but I didn't like what the change was from being steamships to motor ships. That means from steam powered turbine ships to motor ships, which meant I would become a mechanic and I didn't want that. So, I quit a six-figure job because I didn't like it. And some people say, oh, you're nuts. That's security. You gave that up? Are you crazy? Well, look, anyone can quit a six-figure job whenever they want to. As long as you've got a desire for something else bigger that resonates with your gut that that you're really passionate about so because i was so passionate about traveling i said how can i quit this job and continue traveling when i held my hands out i looked down i said wow i could put literally a million dollars worth of gemstones or diamonds in my hand i'm going to go to gemology school so I got interested about gemstones. I went to Sri Lanka. I learned about the gem mines there. I went and saw the beautiful star sapphires sparkling under the lights there. They were gorgeous. And it was one of the first times I just didn't buy because I didn't know enough. So I said, let me learn about gemstones before I get in the business. So some other people on the ship knew that I was fascinated by gemstones. And they saw in the Bangkok Post, there was the Asian Gemological Association, uh, Gemological Association of Sciences in Bangkok. And every year I sent away for the curriculum for five years. I went to that school in 1987 for just to see if I liked it for a week long course. I was fascinated. I said, I'm coming back. That's when I moved to Thailand. I got an apartment there in March of 1987. And I've lived there ever since. So really, I commute between Thailand here. I lived in England, uh, I have a company in Australia. But that's not what I saw. It's just what I did because the opportunity showed up because I took an action to do the things that I wanted to do in life that really resonated with my heart, with my gut, that, that stimulated and made me like get up every day and I was fascinated by life and I still am. And I have nothing today but to continue the journey, but it's so important that I share because I see people like I'll drive into Boston because I have to go get uh, like my visa extension or something. And I see the people lined up in their cars and they have nice cars, beautiful cars, but they're 
spending, what are they giving up for the car, for the house? Every day, two or three hours parking, paying for the parking, stuck in the, you know, the traffic. And, and really, you've got to do that five days a week, every week. There are some people that don't, but a majority of people have a job and they're locked in to a place they don't really like. I was watching a video the other day and he said, and I'm aware of this, and I think probably a lot of people are, that heart attacks, the biggest number is on a Monday morning. People don't want to do it anymore. So... What I discovered about travel is you buy a little, you sell a little, you stop by a roadside stand, a fair. The fairs sometimes are big, sometimes they're small. Maybe it's a flea market. Maybe it is a like a diving show. So I created a line because I love the ocean. So I created a line of nautical and sea life jewelry. But... I never had a big company. I saw pictures of people when I first came here, came, went to, came to Thailand uh, when I was buying and selling and trading for like four or five years. And my wife now, who wasn't at the time, showed me, oh, look, this guy's a customer of, of our company where she worked. And he started out, he didn't have a big house, he didn't have a boat, and he didn't have a nice car. But she said he bought a little soda, a little bottle, a little soda, a little, and built this empire for himself. Well, I thought it was a lot because I didn't have anything back then. I traveled really light. I, when I lived in Key West, I didn't even have a TV. I had a bicycle. I had very little, minimalistic, because... I like to travel, move around, be outside, fresh air. That's me. But if you like to travel and you say, well, I don't have any money. How am I going to make money? What I'm offering you is there's packages if you've earned some money. And suppose you love airplanes or suppose you love horses and you go to horse shows and you go to horse fairs. You see people selling gifts that are all about horses or jewelry that's all about horses or bags or clothing or whatever. People are passionate about their horses, just like they might be about a renaissance fair. They go there for a month and you come and visit for a few days, then you got to go back to work or whatever fair it is. We all have some hobby and passions. And if you don't find one, <clears throat> something that really drives you, and I know how I got successful at my business, no matter what it was, whatever it took, I did it. Because it, it wasn't like work, because I had a, had a vision and a goal of traveling and going around the United States, going around the world, which I did. I built six companies in different countries around the world. I'm a commodity trader, but I got as passionate about that. So I studied course for commodity trading, not because I was going to go be a broker, but I thought, what the heck? I'm in this game. Let me really learn much more about it. It was one of the toughest exams I ever took. So I got a series three commodity trading license. And I haven't recruited anybody, but I use it personally. So one of the things that happened was the exchange rate, Forex, we know, and you travel and the money's worth more in another country than it is here, than it is in another country. Well, I happened to, what was a, you would say is a bad thing, a distributor of mine folded two months before the holidays. I had like 15 people saying, Peter, we ordered all this jewelry. We called these people in Scotland. They're not answering. Their website's down. Nothing's going on. 2006. And I said, wow, what am I going to do? I've got built these companies, customers that relied on Peter Stone, on the jewelry to make their money. 
and they started growing and they were really selling it well. In a tough market, they were selling it really well. So I did some homework and the exchange rate was hugely favorable for the British. So when I put one pound in the bank, I got $2.10 out of the USA bank. That was just a little cream on top of getting to travel and getting to set up a business in England and drive all over the UK, England, Ireland, Wales, Scotland. Uh, I just went everywhere. And I went there with my wife, my family, my daughter went to school in England. We experienced this together as a family. And we hopped in the car one weekend and we drove for two weeks, not two days, not a Saturday and a Sunday and come back to work. No, we drove until we were tired. We said, you know, we'll go to Italy. This is the first half of the trip. We'll come back and we'll drive a couple weeks more. And we'll see Italy later and maybe Croatia and some other places. So the story is how I discovered that this goes really deep is this. Back in 1980, 1992, I had an office in Seattle on Pier 70. Beautiful view right out on the end. But most of the time I was on the road and I drove when I sold out of my car, I would rent a Camaro Z28, really inexpensive. I'd rent them for weeks, even a month. And I'd drive up and down the coast to Northern California, up to Seattle and past. So the journey going up and down Route 101, sometimes on five, but 101 was beautiful. They had amazing campgrounds. I didn't want to waste my money on these hotels. Some were pretty expensive. Some were overpriced because I would go there in the summer season. So I'm acting kind of like a tourist. I'm going to beautiful places where people are paying a lot of money, but I'm collecting money. So if you go to a fair and a festival for a couple days or a day, you give money. But I say, get on the right side of the table, the table that's taking the money. Call your shots, work three or four, five days a week, but go where you wanna go, when you wanna go. There's enough fairs and festivals. If you go to a fair and festival, you may be doing $500 and $5,000 a day. You got a okay paycheck because now you've got a business and now you've got legitimate tax expenses, tax deductions that go with a business. I'm not a tax expert. You have to ask people about that. But I do know enough about my business that there are benefits. The government wants you to open a business. They want to stimulate the economy. They want people working. They want you to give jobs to other people. I hired people for fairs and festivals to help me out. Now we have a, we have a client that uh, goes to some rock festivals and fairs. He's been doing it for years. And he loves, he says, Peter, I got to quit one of these days. He's been doing it for like 12 years. And he loves traveling so much. He takes his daughter and his wife and his son with him for a month. They have a blast. And yeah, sometimes it's tough, but look, nothing is really easy. Is it tough going in the traffic? Every day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, does that get old? I think so. So driving up and down Route 101 from Seattle out to the coast, down to uh, Northern California, in a little bit north of Gold Beach, Oregon, I saw these people in their motorhome on the side of the road. There was a fair. 
Like, it was a just a bunch, maybe like 25 people set up there, like community, people traveling. They just stopped, and they sold their wares on the roadside. I'm thinking, how cool is this? Let me stop and talk to them about buying jewelry. So they bought $500 worth of jewelry. I came back three weeks later. They were still there. They bought $1,500. I kept in touch with them. I came back another three weeks later. They bought $4,500 in jewelry. They kept on tripling their purchase. So if they tripled the price or doubled the price, they were making some good money in that little time frame. I'm like excited. They're excited. So what did they do? They came up to Oregon where they live. And they were like kind of retirement age. They didn't want to stay in Oregon because it's cold and wet and rainy in the winter. They wanted to go to Arizona. So now they were selling some things. He had like a piano thing that was like a guitar. He was playing that. He was having a blast with his wife. They were the nicest people. And they had a ceramics business, but that was a lot of work. And they stopped that and got out of it and started just kind of buying and selling fun things. And they got into the jewelry. Then they said, you know, Peter, we have a house we can't sell. How would you like to do? Why don't you take a look at it? Would you like a house? <laughs> and I'm like, well, I don't know. I didn't think about it. So I went up and saw their house. I traded some jewelry for this property in Oregon. I still have that property in Gold Beach, Oregon. And what a beautiful coast. And the the uh, facilities there are clean, heated. I mean, they have a hair dryers for women and, and warm water. I mean, they're spotless. So I had a tent when I was going there in 92, and I would sleep out on the beach, fresh air, camping out. And fortunately, in 1992, there was a drought in the Northwest, uh, to my benefit. And that's another story about intention and luck. So I was very lucky. And I met those people and I continued to build my business. So that's just an example. The Rollins did this for several years. Well, actually, they did it for about eight years, back and forth and back and forth. Uh, and then I lost touch with them over, over time. But I ended up buying that property and they continued selling jewelry and going up and down on the road. Instead of taking a retirement and spending it, that stayed in the bank. Now, I'm not saying you have to do this in a big way, but if you want to, you can. But if you just want to make a little eighty or a hundred thousand dollars a year as a supplemental income so you don't have to take it out of the bank so if you're in your thirties or forties and you want to just cut it and get out of the city and get out and see the country see the world it's one very cool way to do it so you can take a look at the link here the link below you can find out more. Just click on that link and you'll see how this program works. You can schedule a call with me. And I'll talk to you. We'll have a chat. And I'll get really real about, you know, it's, it's, it's a little tough. You're traveling. You don't know where the money is going to come. I've never known where the money is going to come from. I make jewelry designs. Do I ever know they're going to sell? I don't. I never. Look. That's, for me, there's nothing safe. And actually, the more, the bigger the challenge, the more I love it, because I don't know what's going to happen, but I know something exciting is going to happen. And that's always been the case all my life. I was writing this morning. I'm writing. I'm writing uh, a, a few books, but I'm doing some writing, and, and I'm listening to this amazing woman, How to Write what to write, how to dig down in your core and not write about what somebody else wrote or use their, just use the real core. I've traveled to over a hundred countries and maybe half the states. And I still have a lot to go and see and do. 
and I love what I do. Do you love what you do? If you do, do more of it. But if you don't, change it. Change it. Life is always a risk. Cross the road is a risk. Get on a plane, it's a risk. Everything's a risk. You don't know, we don't know, but if you go around and use positive intention, focusing on the upside, as you move forward, guess what happens? You get the upside. Something less than comfortable comes your way. You don't feel good. You're not happy about it. But the first question I ask is, what's the good thing in this that I haven't seen? And find it. What's the usefulness? Can I help somebody else from what I just learned? Can I help myself? If something happened that tripped me up and it looks like it was something big, I say it's a good thing it happened now so it didn't happen when it's a huge situation. So I'm always looking for the upside. I'm always running forward in a courageous fashion. Traveling the world on ships. I was just having a discussion earlier today with my camera person saying, well, I've never been on ships yet. I always wanted to. I'm like, well, go. Oh, I'm so afraid. Well, that's pretty typical. People are scared. Get over it. I mean, I've been on the pier since I was four years old, and all I ever wanted to do was go places that I had never been to see what's there. The wave's this big, let it get this big. Wow, feel the adrenaline. This is living life. Are you kidding me? Living in a box, like, I was having a conversation with my daughter and I just said, you know, I don't like living inside a box. I like being outside in the fresh air and, and feeling open and free and feeling life force and the breeze blowing on my face. Sure, I like a house to come home to in several places around the world makes it really convenient. <laughs> and the cultural experience. How about you? Check out the link, click on the link, find out more, ask me some questions. This is pretty fast, simple, and easy. So, I have packages. Some of you are going to say, well, I don't have money, Peter. I'm going to say, well, I have a solution. I have no connections with credit card companies except the credit card I use to spend when I'm traveling and the bill I pay to them, okay, to pay off my debt. So there are credit cards out there you can get for no interest. So if you really wanna do something and you're bold and you're courageous and you have some passion about what it is and you know if you only had some money, you could make this work. You go get a credit card for $5,000 limit that has no interest, interest-free for six months or a year. Since you were going to a fair and a festival you know about, and you know if you could set up something there and sell jewelry there, you could make money. I can help you with this. In our packages, there's a $5,000 package for a startup. You gotta have a decent inventory because what if you sell three or four thousand dollars in a weekend? You've sold not quite half your inventory, but you've got to take inventory and then you need to order some more. So now you got some cash. You can pay a little back or you can use it and buy more jewelry because you had a success. And then you could wait maybe a few months and pay the whole thing off. But you just keep buying low, selling high, getting on the right side of the table. So the packages are a $5,000, a $10,000, a $15,000. And when you click on the link, you're going to go to a place where you can download these PDFs. There's a $30,000 program for someone who is 
like they've retired or they've got a chunk of money they saved up. And they know this is what I want to do. I want to get out because in a motorhome, you don't need much space to put jewelry there. It's not gold and diamonds. It's sterling silver. The risk is really low. And it all fits in a nice motorhome. Matter of fact, it fits in a car. It fits in an SUV. How do I know? Well, I've done it all. So it's pretty fast, simple, and easy. You just have to have a little passion, patience, and drive to get out there and make it happen. And probably a little spirit of adventure. But don't let stuff hold you back like security. Take your kids. Take them for a journey out in the world. Show them something. Let them get dirty. They got a phone. They can stay connected with their friends. I know. My daughter does. We're all connected. We're never far apart. Not like 20 or 30 years ago. Oh, I'm leaving my friends. Today, you don't leave your friends. You're always in touch. So you're not leaving anything. You can I mean, the things that you think, oh, I'm going to miss. No. Or your kids are going to miss. No. And you can always come back and visit. And then that's a celebration. Hey, what have you been doing? Where have you been going? You wouldn't believe what we did this summer. You wouldn't believe what we did this winter. Traveling, meeting new people, living life. I know I've been doing it all my life. I had only a couple of jobs that I was required to show up a certain time because I wasn't good at it. But I did not much. Month, couple of months here, a couple of months there, make some quick money in between school when I was a kid and teenager. Uh, when I was 15, I mean, I did some stuff, but not much. Matter of fact, I did some structured stuff plus I went and hauled 75 lobster traps in the morning before I went to work when I was 15. And I always made good money. Why? I worked hard. Okay. I mean, there's ways to work easy if you like sitting at the computer. To me, sitting at the computer is kind of boring, but I respect people that do that. My character is that I like to get out and smell the sea and hear the waves crashing, feel the wind on my face, and I like to get exercise. I like to move with life. Click on the link, check it out. If you have any questions, let me know. This is Peter from Peter Stone. You can go also to www peterstonelive.com. I'll post that up there, but this link should get you there. Uh, but I think it takes you directly to the fairs and festivals. That's also at Peter Stone Live, where I have several different courses about getting your mind right. Because if you don't overcome fear and replace it with faith, when I was doing my writing, this while, I was talking about how I developed a faith that I was good enough, I could figure it out, that even with my company all these years, like I spent money. Did I know where I was going to get it? I just knew that if I did the work, the money would come in. You just got to get and do the work and have enough faith in yourself. Just look around. Plenty of people do it. You can too. Join me on a journey to wherever you go. The journey of adventure, the journey of living. Make your life a sculpture. www.peterstonelive.com Just in case you didn't get it, it's www.peterstonelive.com or click on the link. I'm here for you to see the Peter Stone jewelry. You also got www.peterstone.com. Peterstone.com is where the jewelry sits. The opportunity, as I just described it, you get more than 17 things coaching from me. Time together on Zoom meetings, questions and answers. 
You get your own custom designs. We help you design it. We'll give you marketing material. Things I didn't get when I started. Today, this is a turnkey business from someone who's done it successfully for more than 30 years. I know what I'm talking about. I know where the opportunity lies and I can help you break through anything that's holding you back because life is meant to be fun, enjoyed, and an adventure. Peter Stone saying thank you and you have the best of vibrant days. Thanks very much.